I'm back. Um, good morning. Welcome again to the various groups we have here. The uh, LCMS Disaster Response Conference continues to give attention to our situation here at the seminary. Thank you. Our Contemplate students are here. That's the next generation, and we're glad you're, you're present with us. And the Board of Regents is here. <laughs> and it's going to be good. It's going to be good. Thank you, Pastor Christensen. Um, my daughter and family worship at the Lutheran Church of Webster Gardens. And every once in a while, we'll go over there for our worship with them. And we always appreciate your sermons, Pastor King's sermons, and the healthy ministry that you have. So thank you for being the host congregation and pastor for our communion uh, celebrations this year. Dean Burrison has written on the back of your worship folder an explanation of this rule, regulation, that we have a congregation to sponsor communion, and you, you can read that. One of the real benefits of, of this practice, not only fulfilling all righteousness, but we get to meet a real pastor who leads a healthy, servant-minded, active congregation. And uh, there'll be many opportunities for you to mingle with us and students throughout this year, so we thank you very much for that. Welcome. Um, the program says an announcement. When I came in, I was given this, this email. It's from the cutest funeral home. And it says, the visitation for Dale Meyer has not yet been scheduled. <laughs> it's going to be fine. It's going to be fine. Diane and I are greatly conflicted about this decision because, as I hope you know, we love this place with a passion. On the other hand, as she leaned into me one day and said, Dale, we're in our 70s. In the ministry and in life, an important instinct is a sense of timing. Psalm 90 says, the years of our lives are three score years and 10, and if by reason of strength they be four score years, yet is their strength labor and sorrow, and they are soon cut off and we fly away. And then verse 12 says, teach us to number our days that we may gain a heart of wisdom, a sense of timing. And I believe, and Diane believes, that this is the time, even though just about every bone and passion in our body does not want to step away. In January, I'll be 73, and my uh, powers will diminish. It's time for a new generation to take up leadership of this fine institution. It'll be fine because this is not our institution, not our seminary. This is an institution of the Lord Jesus Christ and it's in his mission. That's why we're raising students up for the future. We will recede. The future servant leaders of the church will continue the mission long after we've gone into heaven. My sense of timing also tells me that the seminary is in excellent shape. Now, admittedly, I'm biased. <laughs> and uh, I could walk around this campus and just talk your heads off about things that still need to be done. But we're in good shape in just about every which way except we need more students, I get that, and we'll get them. I think that makes it, uh, that's another reason why it's, it's, it's time to 
pass the baton to the next generation of leadership. My sense of timing also tells me that this triennium, we have an excellent Board of Regents. We have had bumps in the past triennium, but it's not going to be that way now. And in a minute, you'll hear from our chairman, Reverend Peppercorn, who will lay out for you some of his thoughts. But, but I've been very impressed with this new, new board. So it's going to be fine. And uh, I woke up in the middle of the night thinking about, well, Dale, what are you going to say? And I tossed and turned about that. And I realized I don't have to say too much because I'm going to be around. Diane's going to be around, OK? And it's not like all my thoughts have to be compressed into this moment right now. The next six months are going to be teachable moments. And we're going to be around, and I'll be open for casual or, or less than casual, more formal conversations. We look forward to that. The biggest transition that's really on my mind is not the transition to the 11th president of the seminary, but rather the transition. And when you get to be almost 73, you think about the transition more than these earthly changes. And retirement will give me time to prepare for the final examination. Uh, one of the things I need to do in retirement is write the commentary on First Peter for the Concordia series. I, it was supposed to be out about 15 years ago. <laughs> And somehow you people and the problems you create got in the way of that. <laughs> so I look forward to uh, writing, writing that commentary and, and I'll continue to travel and speak and spend some time with a blessed woman. That got, that got no laugh. <laughs> she's, she's, she's back there. Um, and because of, because of that scholarly work that, that I want to do, I'll be around the library and I will give my blessing and whatever help and support the 11th president would like to him. And I will do that willingly and I pledge that now. So having said that, let it be well with your soul. The Lord is going to lead this seminary just as he has led it in the past. And it's going to be fine in the future. It'll be a teachable six months. I, I present to you now the chairman of our Board of Regents, uh, Pastor Peppercorn, and uh, all is well, right, Todd? Amen. As Dale said, my name is Pastor Todd Peppercorn. I'm the pastor at Holy Cross Lutheran Church in Rockland, California, and we bring you greetings. It took a lot of work for us to get Dr. Meyer's retirement announcement to correspond with the Disaster Response Conference. <laughs> so thank you for that. <clears throat> we wanted to make sure that every possibility for helping him was available. <clears throat> on, on the other hand, I'm sure that Diane is looking forward to getting at least a little bit of her husband back. I hope that your honeydew list is in good shape, Diane. Excellent. Probably 46 years and running, I'm guessing. We love President Meyer and Diane, Opa and Oma. It's going to take time for all of us to process and understand what this change means. Concordia Seminary is in a better place because of his service and leadership, their service and leadership. As we try to understand this, and there is some grief and rejoicing in God's good gifts and look to the future, I want you to know, first of all, that the Board of Regents will work with the rest of the administration and faculty to make this year a great one for Concordia Seminary, for Dr. Meyer, and for Diane. So what happens next? What happens next is that the board and faculty will form a search committee, will send out a call for nominations and go through a process outlined in ridiculous detail in the Senate handbook, and will eventually elect a new president. I can't tell you exactly when that will happen or how long it will take, 
my hope and kind of sense of things at this point is that we'll have a new president by uh, or around the end of the academic year, somewhere there before or after. That's my hope, and I see no reason why that cannot be done as God gives us light. In the midst of all of this, God is faithful. He loves you and bears all things for you and with you, and our Lord will carry us through these things. And in the words of one of my very favorite people, it's a great time to be the church. Thank you very much.